if you work with lead times, then this is a visual that you need to have in your Power BI toolkit. It's clean, native, and it doesn't require any custom visuals, SVGs, or add-ons. Today, I'm going to show you how to build a visual that not only shows the average lead time, but the minimum value and the maximum value all in one simple interactive chart. So this came up when I was asked to present the average lead time across different regions. The classic approach, drop a bar chart, show the average, call it done. But I thought I can do better. What if I showed the range of the lead times too? The minimum lead time, the maximum lead time, and of course the average lead time. But before we get to build a visual, you need to make sure that the numbers behind it are solid. That starts with calculating the average lead time properly, because how you calculate it matters. A typical measure uses the date diff function, calculating the number of days between the orders date and the delivery date. It works, but it includes weekends. And in most business setups though, people are interested in working days only. That's where network days comes in. It calculates the number of business days between two dates. The formula requires a start date, an end date, and optionally weekends and holidays. You might have noticed I've said optionally weekends. Yes, because as standard, you have Saturdays and Sundays. But using these functions, you have 17 different options that you can choose from, and you can find all of them on learn.microsoft.com. I'll put a link to that page in the description box below. As for holiday options, if you have a table with a column containing the holiday dates in date format, then you can add it here and they will be also excluded from the calculation. Now let's add it to a simple bar chart showing the average lead time by region. And now let's clean it up. First, change the title. The title should read average lead time in days, just to make it clear what the visual is all about. Next, let's remove the title for both y-axis and for x-axis. Also, I would like to remove the x-axis values as well as they don't bring anything to our visual. Then, update the bar colors to match your color scheme. For this exercise, I will use my trusty gray 2A303F. And next, in layout, change the space between series to 50%. This will give your visual a modern, clean look. And of course, last but not least, turn on the data labels. So now you have a clean base, but it doesn't tell the full story. Let's take it a step further and show the spread, the minimum and maximum lead time per each region. You'll need two measures that will show the minimum value and the maximum value. The maximum value is calculated like this using the maxx formula. We calculate the network days between the order date and the delivery date. For the minimum value, you have the same measure with the sole difference that you should use min x instead of maxx. For this demo, I'll use for the minimum value the date diff function because of how the data is set up. But in real life, you should use network days. Now, if you drop this into the same bar chart, you'll quickly end up with a cluttered mess. So, what's the solution? Easy. Error bars. Let's remove the measures from our visual. Let's go to the formatting pane. Go to error bars. Turn them on. And then set the upper bound to be your maximum lead time and the lower bound to be the minimum lead time. This way you can show the minimum and the maximum boundary without adding extra bars. Next, go to bars and turn the transparency to 100% because we don't want to see the original bar. We only want to see the error bars. 
Let's tweak the error bars. Go to error bars, go to bar, turn on match series color, set the width to 10 and border size to zero. Next, select the marker to be the filled circle and size six. Now you're getting somewhere. Two more things that we need to do right now. First, it's turn on the error labels for our error bars and then turn off the data labels for our original measure. But there is one issue that you will run into. As you see, sometimes the boundaries, the minimum and the maximum are a bit too far off and Power BI will hide them. The solution for this, very easy. Let's go to the x-axis, range, and for the minimum value put minus eight. And for the maximum value, you need to create a new measure that calculates the maximum value for any given areas, for any given year, and adds 5% to it. Now let's go back to our visual. And for the maximum, we need to select that new measure. Field value, measures, maximum axis. Perfect. Now everything is visible, the minimum value, the maximum value as well. Now, so far so good. But how about the average lead time? Let me show you a very clean way to do that. First, duplicate your average lead time measure and rename it by adding a dummy to its name. Next, add your new measure to the visual. And in the build pane, make sure that the new measure is above the original measure that you have. Now you see the colors for the bars have changed. So let's go back to formatting pane, bars, select series average lead time, and the color will be the one that you've set up initially. The next thing that we want to do is turn off the legend as we don't need it. Next, we go to error bars. We select the dummy measure this time and the upper bound will be your average lead time measure. And don't forget to turn it on. Perfect. Now let's tweak it a bit as well. Go to bar and select a different color, something that stands out like this orange, for example. Let's turn the width to two and the border size to zero. So far so good, but we don't have the value. And for that, you need to turn on the error labels for the same series, the dummy one. And you see there's a slight issue with the visual, namely the label for the average lead time is too close to the error bar. So you need to go back to bars, select all series, go to layout and increase the space between series to let's say 50%. This looks a lot better, but this visual isn't perfect just for lead times. It's perfect for showing project progress, milestones, or any metric where range matters. It also works beautifully with slices. And speaking of that, there's a bunch of new features for the list slicer that you might want to check out. I've covered all of them in this video right here. And remember, if you choose to become a channel member and support the channel, then you will have early access to all of my videos plus all the PBIX files that I'm using. This is Delian, signing off. Until next time, cheerio!